Hello everyone. My name is Karan Singh, a senior architect at Red Hat Storage Business Unit. The topic of the day is Red Hat EMQ Streams, as known as Kafka, running on top of OpenShift Container Platform and consuming Red Hat OpenShift Container Storage. We will cover some concepts followed by a live demo. We will quickly go over some concepts of Apache Kafka and Red Hat EMQ Streams touching upon some Kafka use cases and then storage use cases for Kafka. At the end, we will go over a demo where we're gonna deploy a Red Hat MQ streams using operators and then launch some sample Kafka producers and consumer applications. And then in the end, we will do some failure injection testing. Let's begin. Apache Kafka is an open source project initially developed by LinkedIn and then later it was contributed to Apache Foundation. Kafka underneath is a highly scalable distributed messaging system which is high performance and, and fault tolerant. Kafka does have a notion of producers and consumers where producer produces messages and events which are then ingested into Kafka on the other side, consumer apps could consume the messages from Kafka topic and do the post-processing. Kafka comes with a stream processing API which makes Kafka a good fit for real-time streaming engine as well. Kafka could also connect with other tools using the connectors which for example like NoSQL, MongoDB, MySQL, S3 could connect to Kafka and then use it. Kafka comprises of various use cases. So varying from audit logs, messaging, web activity tracking, uh, click stream data, all of the data could directly ingested or dumped into Kafka topic and then used by applications. Kafka is also good fit for mess metrics, log aggregation and stream processing engines. So lots of streaming metrics data, streaming logs data, could land up in Kafka and then used by apps later as and when needed. Databases, the Kafka app like web apps could simply write data to Kafka which could later be ingested into database. This is pretty popular architecture these days. GPS data, real-time mobile tracking and GPS coordinating up data could also come to Kafka. IoT is a good use case where lots of uh, devices and sensors could send the data to the application into a Kafka topic, Kafka layer, and then later it could be moved to their respective person storage systems. Red Hat AMQ Streams is a Red Hat product which is an enterprise distribution of Apache Kafka. So Red Hat AMQ Streams aims to simplify the deployment of Kafka on top of OpenShift and this is all based on top of an open source project called its StreamZ. Basically, AMQ streams provide containerized, hardened, and secure images for Apache Kafka and Zookeeper. It also provides operators for managing, deploying, and maintaining the cluster. So operators like cluster operators, user operators for users, and topic operator for Kafka topics. So this all comes bundled with, uh, with AMQ streams. Hence making Kafka simple on top of OpenShift. How does storage plays in the world of Kafka? So storage plays a very vital role for Kafka because retention of messages, the rate of the, the message processing, it all depends on the storage type used underneath. If starting OpenShift container storage, which is based out of Ceph, provides a fault tolerant, highly scalable storage system for Kafka. Here the Kafka brokers, all the Kafka brokers, basically the Kafka parts could request for PVC and present volume for from OpenShift container storage. At the same time, Zookeeper parts could also request for PVs from OpenShift container storage. So this layer provides persistency in Kafka. If you don't choose to use persistent layer like OCS, then the retention of the topic are ephemeral. So if a part destroys or if a part goes offline, your data is lost, then Kafka needs to do the replication and rebalancing of the data from the other part, so which is not very convenient. So in the first place, use PVs from OCS backed and make Kafka kind of a high available. In, an, in this case, if any of the part goes down, Kubernetes will spawn up a new part and it will attach the same volume 
to the new Kafka pod, which means the recovery is way faster compared to ephemeral storage. Kafka also comes with Kafka Connect, another side tool, which could move the messages from the Kafka persistent layer onto the, to the object storage layers, like Ceph in this case, Ceph or OpenShift Container Storage. Another type of storage which is under development in the upstream community is the tier storage, where uh, based on the retention period of the messages, the Kafka itself move the messages, ship the messages like the old messages onto FS3 in this case and when needed when application requests for even older messages Kafka could go and fetch the messages from S3 and serve it to the application so which means it's a tiered storage concept in Kafka so here's a fun fact uh, this is a slide I borrowed from PayPal so PayPal is processing 400 billion messages a day with 50 Kafka clusters running using 300 plus topics and overall this system was consuming 7 petabytes of storage capacity and this data is not new this is based on Kafka 1.1 currently we are on Kafka 2.3 which means the data is one year old and I'm very positive that the storage requirement for PayPal would have grown higher as we speak so to all the sales rep out there Kafka could be a serious consumer of storage, which means storage plays a vital role in Kafka and it has to be treated nicely. So let's move on to demo number one where we're gonna provision a Kafka and Zoopla cluster running on OpenShift 4.2 backed by OpenShift Container Storage 4.2 and then we're gonna launch a sample Kafka producer and consumer app. So let's go. First create a project called AMQ Streams. And within this project, we will install the AMQ Streams operator using Operator Hub. We'll select Streaming and Messaging and AMQ Streams. Make sure that the project is AMQ Streams. You could install this globally across OpenShift platform, but for the sake of simplicity, right now I'm installing this within a single project. I will select my project from here and I will subscribe to this namespace so this should install my operator once the operator is up i can go and watch my parts and the pod is coming up i can switch to my cli oc project streams and the container is running oc get power should tell me my deployment units and my pods and services if they are already okay so my pod is running my operator is running next step is to install or set up a Kafka cluster but before that we will make sure the storage class is set to OpenShift container storage so get to see get storage class it should Tell us the storage class and the default storage class is SafRBD. Now we will deploy a Kafka and Zookeeper cluster. By the time this is running, we will go over the contents of this file. This is running. Meanwhile, let's go and talk a little bit about this configuration file. What we have in here. So, this file is pretty basic. So, I'm installing a Kafka cluster and I am assigning a persistent storage claim of 100 GB to my Kafka cluster and I'm assigning 10 GB storage to my zookeeper pods so as you can see this Kafka cluster is coming up the container is coming up and uh, it should take a few minutes all right so the Kafka and the zookeeper clusters are up and we should be good to go with next steps of this demo we will verify the 
storage claims that Kafka and Zookeeper has requested. As you can see this, we have three pods of Kafka and each of them has requested 100 GB of PV from OpenShift Container Storage. Similarly, 10 GB for each Zookeeper cluster. So, this is good. Alright, so next we will create a Kafka topic. But before that, let's get Kafka topic. So, this is short for Kafka topics. So, we don't have anything. So, let's create a new Kafka topic from this. So, this will create a topic called as my topic in my cluster. Should be here any moment. Now we have Kafka topic. The next step is to create a producer app which will write contents to this Kafka topic. So we will use OCF live file and meanwhile this is running. We will go and look at the contents of this OC file real quick. Simple file, it will it's a hello world producer application which will write to my Kafka topic one million messages. So there's like message count continuously to like write a one million messages. So this is up. OC get pods. We can also go to our CLI console and look for the messages. So you can see this hello world producer is up and it is running. We can go and let's look at the logs of this container. Switch my tab and I'll stream the logs of my Hello World producer application, which is generating 1 million messages to my Kafka topic. So you can see this continuously, it's generating Hello World messages to my Kafka topic. Now, Time to launch a consumer app which should listen to my Kafka topic and start reading messages from the topic. So now my OC get calls, my consumer app should be up, the containers it's creating should be up and running at the moment. Once the container is up, it would be reading messages from the same topic. Alright, so the container is up. We now scale the logs of my Hello World consumer app. So as you can see this, there is a slight latency. However, you can see this. The first window is generating messages in the Kafka topic which is a consumer app, sorry, a producer app. The second window, we are continuously receiving the messages from the Kafka topic. All right. So let's induce some failure into the system by destroying a Kafka pod, which is backed by OpenShift Container Storage. So there, should, there will be no glitch if we do that because it is backed by a persistent storage layer. So change the shell. So this is the list of this continuous watch command of my existing cluster pods. I'm gonna delete a Kafka pod like this Kafka delete pods pod deleted. We should see some changes here. So look at this. This is terminating. So Kafka cluster node one has gone. But at the same time, my consumer and producer apps they are functional as they are. There's no outage in here. What Kubernetes will do is it will spawn up a new container for Kafka node one and it will mount the same persistent volume which was mapped to the previous container and migrating it without moving the data. So look at this. Container is Kafka zero is now coming up 25 seconds. Should be here. Now it's running. Boom. My consumer and producer app did notice about it and they were functioning as they should. So this was the end of the demo that we planned for. And I am done with this presentation.